<clears throat> oh, hi, that's K bar user. Today I'm going to kick off this um, survival series. And we're going to do it from a tabletop because I'm going to make, I want you to understand how I work and how I think of things. Now we all know the survival pyramid, the food, shelter, water, fire, yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> fire, shelter, and water. What I practice survival as is an elongated pyramid with a foundation. Any good building has a foundation. So if you're not grounded and you don't have a foundation for it, then you're going to slide, you're going to move away from what you should be doing and whatnot. So, here's my foundation. Whenever, and I have a couple of survival stories on my videos, whenever I was in a survival situation, if I wasn't in a self-rescue situation, like the one story I had where I got hit with a deadfall, I thought about it and I want to be found, I want to be rescued, and I want to get home. So my main priorities are being found, getting rescued, and getting home. That's it, that's my foundation. Now the other three sides of the pyramid would be water, shelter, fire. There's a lot of different points of view. Is shelter a better means of, of doing it than fire? Do you need water absolutely over fire and shelter? Yada, yada, yada. It's all situational. If, per se, you're on a 95 degree day, 90 degree day, and you're out hiking, you start getting dehydrated. Do you need a shelter? Well, possibly, but you need water more than you're going to need the shelter. Definitely don't need fire. If it's a nice summer day or even a good fall day like today, it's about uh, 55 degrees overcast though. You can see it's going to start raining. I need a shelter because it's going to drop to 30 tonight. Maybe even 25. I'm going to be wet. Now I need a shelter. I don't need water first. I don't need a fire first. I need to get a shelter up so that I don't get wet. So that I can keep my firewood dry. Let's say it's winter time, or let's just say it does rain now and I am wet. Well, now I don't need a shelter. I need to get a fire started to get my clothes dry, get my core temperature back up while I'm working on the shelter. So you see, everything is situational. Yeah, there's a survival pyramid, and if you put all three of them together, chances are you're going to get out. But it's a situational position. What is your immediate need? And that's something you're going to have to dissertain when you get out there. You, you know, if you get lost and um, it starts raining on you and it's chilly like it is today. Well, what do I need first? First thing you got to do is sit down. Just sit down and not think about anything. There's a little situation in the woods, it's called woods panic. That's what we call it. There's a lot of other, woods shock, there's a lot of other names for it. Basically what happens is you panic because you're lost and you don't know what to do. Practice that situation. You've seen my dump videos if you watch my videos. Practice that situation. It's almost as good as getting lost. Just have somebody dump you off of what gear you can grab immediate notice. Do you have the right gear? A lot of people think, yeah, I've got this huge bag and I've got all the great gear. Is it the right gear? Or are you carrying too much gear? Or are you carrying too little gear? That's something you have to go through for yourself. It's all situational. Summertime, you need to carry less. Wintertime, you need to carry more. So, we got the three sides of the pyramid. Fire, shelter, and water and why each one of them becomes important in different situations. Now, the second layer of my pyramid is hygiene, food, and signaling. 
these are not situational. First off, food. If your body doesn't have food, say within 24 hours, food is your fuel. If your body doesn't have fuel within the first 24 hours, it starts to wear down, especially if you're working hard. You can carry some powdered drink mixes with you to throw in your water, give you energy, give you calories to go with. That's the easiest way out. You can carry Cliff Bars and Mojo Bars, Protein Bars, whatever. Granola Bars is a great source of energy. Sooner or later, if you are lost and you're in a situation, you don't know if that situation is going to be three hours, you don't know if it's going to be three weeks. You're going to need food. Now this time of year, it's fall, it's almost winter time here in PA, most of your edibles are dried up. So what do you do? Well, your skill set should be traps. Fish traps, animal traps, and an emergency fishing kit. Fish will still bite in cold weather. You heard of ice fishing. People catch fish. It works the same. I'm not going to say you're going to catch enough for dinner, send it off to shore, but you're going to catch a couple anyway. Make sure with your fishing kits that you have big enough hooks. Small hook catches more fish, but big hooks, you, you want a medium sized hook. That's what I go with. A medium size being like a, maybe a number four. I generally carry 20 pound test, test line. I generally carry eight pound and six pound in my kit. I can run that 20, line, 20 pound test for a trot line. The 20 pound test I've got more of, it's uh, 40 yards. So I can make two trot lines 20 yards out into the uh, lake, or I can make one good trot line 40 yards out into the lake. I can make another one out of eight pound test, and I can fish with the six pound. That gives me two trot lines and an active fishing line. I carry hooks, bobbers. I see a lot of guys carrying these plastic jigs. They work great. Personally, myself, go with flies. Fish eat them all year round. You know, the hand tied like you would fly fish with. Fish eat them all year round. They're used to eating them. So even in the wintertime when they're saying, huh, that shouldn't be there. They're still going to hit it anyway. Uh, just to case in point, ice fishermen use what they call a flu flu jig. It's a feathered jig. So first priority after you get your camp set up with your water, your shelter, your fire, is going to be food. Now hygiene, everybody's like, hygiene? Well, let me put it to you this way. You take water out of a creek, you don't boil it, you get sick. I'm not saying you will, you could get sick. Boil your water, that's hygiene. Wash your hands. If you kill an animal, you got dried blood and guts on your hands and you're eating the, that animal later on, you got a little bit of feces, could make you sick. Wash your hands, wash your food, whatever you cook that thing on, or in, if you're using a pot like a canteen cup set or you know any kind of little pot set, wash them. Don't let them set. They will grow bacteria. You will get sick. You're trying. You're you're trying not to get sick in this situation. You're already lost. You could be hurt. You don't want to make your life any more miserable than it already is. Third. Uh, Side to the pyramid in my secondary stage is signaling. Signaling is what's going to get you rescued, it's what's going to get you found, it's what's going to get you home. The easiest way of signaling is carry three bandanas. Three bandanas. Uh, one yellow, two orange bandanas. You raise two orange bandanas up with one yellow bandana. It's a definite contrast. Somebody's going to know, hey, that wasn't put there, that didn't blow away. And I do believe, if my memory serves me right, that is an international distress code. Threes. 
And I believe with the yellow in the middle, it has something to do with a distress coat also. But we were taught that two orange, one yellow in the middle. You can always build signal fires. I would suggest if you get lost, you have the time and the energy and the resources. To start your main fire, build three triangle, build three fires in a triangle that you have your main fire here. Out here, build two more piles of wood. Have stuff like pine boughs, leaves, anything that smokes real heavy. Get it ready. If you hear something, an ATV, you hear a plane, you hear something, get these fires lit off the main fire, throw leaves immediately on the main fire, get that smoke going up in the air. Signal of three. The more contrast smoke you make, the more they're going to see it. If it's a three column of smoke, they're going to know it's a distress signal if somebody's looking for you or he has any knowledge of the woods. Also, on days like this when the weather is, is overcast, your smoke column will not rise that far in the air. It will flatten out. It's a sure sign it's going to rain if you're ever wondering. Build a fire if the smoke comes up, you know, 10, 15 feet and kind of flattens out and drifts off into the woods. It's going to rain. But anyway, with the orange bandanas and stuff, you don't want them four foot, six foot off the ground. You want them things up as high as you can get them. Cut down a 10 foot, 15 foot sapling, tie them to the top and stand that tree back up. The higher they are in the air, the easier it is to see you. And make your camp in the middle of that three. That way anybody that comes there it has no chance of missing a natural built camp. You're right in the middle of these flags. Now, the inside, the last section of the pyramid, is water, shelter, food, fire, procurement. That might sound weird, but yeah, that's the inside of it. Once you get this main done, you have to keep procuring water. You have to keep procuring firewood to keep that fire going or to start the other ones. Once you get a, a semi-shelter up, you have to improve on it to make it waterproof, to make it airproof. Um, that's just, you got to procure everything in the woods for yourself for self-rescue. And even if you are lost and you're traveling, you're still going to have to procure all that stuff. The last very small part of this pyramid is the most important. It's safety. Let's just say um, any kind of safety. I mean, you got to you got burn safety from the fire or cooking on it. You got shelter safety, that the shelter's not going to collapse on you. You got safety of just walking in the woods that you don't fall over and fall on a stump or a stick and stab yourself. Once you're lost, you've got to be 100% more careful than you were before you were lost. Because you get hurt out there, it makes your life five times harder. Ten times harder sometimes. But let's just say, okay, I got my knife and I want to clean this stick, right? This stick's going to make a good club. It's defensible. I'm going to make a point on this stick. No! Away from you, ever, all the time. Take the knife away from you. Your knife is going to be your biggest thing out there. Take the knife away from you. If the knife flies out of your hand, well, it's over there. It's not in you. It hasn't cut you. It's out of your hands and it's on the ground. I'll leave it there. It's okay. Safety like that is, is a big thing. You cut yourself like I was just doing. You know, it's really hard to do that because you're pulling back at yourself. The knife slips, wham. You hit yourself in the chest, you cut your arm open, you cut your other hand open. 
So, a little acronym for you for the foundation of it is FRAG. Found, rescue, and get home. FRAG. Found, rescue, and get home. You want to frag yourself when you get lost. Start your foundation right there. Stop. Know what you need. Take a stock of your equipment. Do you have a gun with you? Do you have a knife with you? Do you have water to last the night? Do you have food? Do you have shelter with you? Or is it something you've got to build and procure? If it is, then you must get to the task of doing it. And that is all situational. A lot of deer hunters come home at dark. You're walking through the woods, it's dark. Oh, I forgot my flashlight. All right. Most of the time you know the woods. You're walking through the woods in the middle of the night, or not the middle of the night, but you're in the dark. All of a sudden you drop your rifle, you shoot yourself in the leg, unfortunately. Um, you're coming out of a tree stand, which we've had happen here in Pennsylvania. Your rifle falls off the string, shot the guy in the, in the leg, blew his leg off. He made it home. He had a 300 Winchester hit him in the bottom of the foot and exited his knee. He didn't have the bottom of his leg. He drug himself a mile and a half to his car and drove himself to the hospital. How he didn't bleed out is beyond me, but thank God he didn't. So that's my survival take part one. First, you got to frag yourself, make a foundation. Then you got to procure fire, water, and shelter, as situations di dictate. Second layer, hygiene, food, signaling, as situations dictate. In my honest opinion, signaling is my first, food is my second, hygiene is my third, because usually after you get the food, then you need to clean up. So it'd be signaling, food, hygiene. Inner circle, procurement of water, shelter, food, fire. The last but not least important, as a matter of fact, it is the most important, is the safety factor of everything you're doing. So, this is part one. After this, we'll take to the field and we'll cover all six layers. We're going to go with basics. I might, you know, use matches and a lighter and a ferro rod. I'm not going to teach all 20 ways of lighting a fire. That you're going to have to look up yourself. And I would advise everybody to start a skill set. Make a kit. There's plenty of kit stuff on YouTube. Make a kit. Put in that kit what everybody else says you need if you're starting out. If you already knew it, if you're already doing this, make a kit of what you know you need. Canterbury's 5 C's is probably one of the best beginner survival kits you can get. Just in case you're wondering, that's a cutting tool, combustion, cordage, container, and cover. If you got them five bases covered, you've got the whole survival pyramid. Redundancy in that kit also. Three ways to make fire at least. One easy way. You could carry char cloth, you could carry flint, but if you need an immediate fire, waterproof matches or a lighter. Once you get your skill sets down, learn how to build shelters, learn how to get water from different sources, not just the creek. We'll go over how to dig for water, we'll go over stuff like that, given time permitted. And 
You carry that kit with you wherever you go. If you go in the woods and you just, you know, you're walking down to the falls to go swimming, take that kit with you because you never know. Right now we're training for what could happen as bushcrafters. The survival aspect comes in the unfortunate case that all else goes wrong. And then we have to survive to keep ourselves alive to frag ourselves. This is KBAR user. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And in the meantime, go frag yourself. It's a good foundation. Hey, y'all have a good night now. I gotta go pick up my knife.